Good evening everyone and uh, I wish you have a good Friday today. Today is a good Friday and the last Friday of 2016. And we hope that 2017 will be a more prosperous year for all of you and for humanity as a whole. And one of the good news to end 2016 is the beginning of the ceasefire in Syria since last month. And we pray that this ceasefire will hold and the internally displaced people will go back to their homes as well as the refugees will go back to their homes. One of the big challenges that we will face, especially in the Syria case before we start talking about the Arab Spring, is soon the ceasefire, the ceasefire will become a fact. No much money will be donated to the humanitarian organization. And the government will be unable to rebuild Syria again or to send back the refugees and the internally displaced people to their house. It's the big challenge, but we have to work together to make it happen and to rebuild Syria again. Arab Spring. Many people were talking about Arab Spring. Some of them said it failed. Some of them said it succeeded. Some of them are saying it has faced a lot of challenges which is making it to have a standstill as we can see it nowadays. We've been discussing it in different meetings in different uh, countries and seeing what is the social impact of the Arab Spring on what we have nowadays. Why there's an obstacle and why there's a delay of picking up the fruits of the Arab Spring. Too many obstacles. The first one, which is not here, that this was not planned. It did not have a solid leadership in most of the countries. You cannot make any change, effective change, without having a proper plan and a strong leadership. But we identified about 15 factors which led to what we have seen nowadays in many of the Arab countries. The bottom four are the most important. And then we cannot separate them from one another, which is ignorance, corruption, unemployment, and poverty. Poverty could be two them or ignorance and corruption could lead to poverty and unemployment. It cannot be separated, these four. So if we look at the data in the Arab region, about first one is the, uh, the ignorance or the, uneduc the level of uneducated people in the Arab world. We find that the top one was Mauritania, nearly 48%, cannot read and write. And the best one is Qatar, 2.3. But the most astonishing is, is Palestine, the second best, 3.3 .3 of the Palestinian people are illiterate. We'll find big countries such as Yemen, 30%, Morocco, 28%, Sudan, 24%, Egypt, nearly 24%. These three countries, Morocco, Egypt, Sudan, and Yemen, constitute more than 60% of the Arab world. Because the average of them is about 26-25% of the people are elected and read and write. This is from UNESCO. 
So if we have ignorant nation, anybody can do anything with them. Because ignorance is the enemy of awareness, is the enemy of development, is the enemy of building and rebuilding your own country again. It's the number one challenge, ignorance, corruption. Corruption again, you can look at it at the slide of corruption. We found that actually the bottom 80 countries or from 80 or 79 and the bottom list the 174, how many Arab countries? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 countries of the Arab world has a level of corruption from seven, the number 79 to 174. Astonishing these are Tunisia, 79, number 79 from the bottom, 80 is Morocco, Egypt, 94, Algeria, 100, Lebanon, 136, Syria, 159, uh, Yemen, 161, Libya, 166, Sudan, 173, and Somalia, 174. And the best amongst them is United Arab Emirates rank is 25, Qatar rank 26, Saudi Arabia, 55, uh, Oman, uh, Sultan of Oman is 64, Kuwait 67. The Gulf states are in a very better shape than the rest of the Arab world. So corruption is another killer for any development or any progress in any nation, any society, and any community. So talk about ignorance then corruption. The third one, again, go back to the four uh, interconnected uh, uh, elements of delaying or uh, obstructing the Arab Spring. Unemployment. Going back to the table of the unemployment, we found in such a table The highest unemployment is in Sudan. It goes up to 20% in 2014. Grew up from 17.5% to 20%. In Tunisia, go up from 13% in 2010 to 16% in 2014. We look at Jordan and Egypt really go from 12, 10 and 12 percent in 2010 to nearly 12 and a half and 13 percent in 2014. Algeria stops at nearly 10 percent unemployment Morocco, about 9% unemployment. There's no much data on Yemen. It's between 17 and 18% 2010 and 2011. So when we look at it, unemployment level is very high. Ignorance or uneducation is very, literate level is very high. And the third one, which is the corruption, is very high. So this constitutes the most important elements of uh, having a delay or obstructed, or as people think, a failed Arab spirit. When you look at poverty in the, in the region as well, it's frightening. This from the World Bank statistics. Algeria official data is 70 percent. Unofficial from Sky News 2014 
is up to 20 percent Egypt 1998 12 percent 2004 17 percent 2008 21 percent 2010 25 percent 2012 13 26 percent 2000 and uh, uh, 15 28 percent the last two figures from the official government statistics of Egypt. Iraq 2007 was 25%, 2012 25%. Jordan goes from 11.5% 2007, 2010 is 14%. The unofficial data on Jordan is 20% from a, a, a site called Our Fathers, the Catholic site. Morocco, 1997, 16%. 2002, 4%. 2007, 9.5% as well. So then I've got two statistics. One is 46%. And the government official side say it is 28%. It's from the World Bank. Tunisia, 2000, was 32%. 2005, 21%, 2010, 21% as well. West Bank is 35% all the way. Yemen, 33%. Syria, 25%, then 33% in actually 2007. Lebanon goes up to 60%, but this is a big reason for that, is that Lebanon is hosting 1.8 million unemployed. That's why the actual figure for Lebanon could be 27%, not actually 60%. And this is 2016. This is the poverty. So talk about poverty, unemployment, corruption, and ignorance are very fundamental factors, are very fundamental factors, are very fundamental factors of stopping Delaying any progress during normal time, but actually during uh, the spring time. Out of these complex factors and relationship came out what we see here, the slums, the street children became a huge problem, and the role of the thugs to stop any development. Because they can be hired or bought by any foreign agency or anybody who are actually countering the spring and bring it back to the autumn or to the winter of the country again. So these four elements lead to that, which lead to the delay or the big challenges facing the Arabs. Not only the four elements, the poverty, unemployment, corruption, and the ignorance, traditional leadership of the community, whether this is in the political party, whether this is in the religious party and the groups, or even in the leadership of community organization. Such a senile, frozen, stony age, leadership don't want to make any change. Do not allow youth and women to be a part of their leadership of their organization. We political party, we civil society organizations, weak and out of date religious organizations, and so on. But this is in the hand of the people who are running the organization, okay, which lead and an, uh, an added factor to the bottom four. Number six, coming is a civil society organization. And the laws which have been created by most of the Arab government to either stop the growth and development of civil society organization, or to strangle them, or to abolish them. Because they can see 
the civil, strong civil society sector is a threat, is a political threat. It should not be a political threat. We should look at it as the third and the one, the fourth factor of building, of building any stable community, society, or a nation, or a country. Why? Because government alone cannot do the job. Government and private business cannot do the job alone. They have to have a third factor, which is civil society organization. Adding to that in the Arab region, the role of the academia and the role of the think tank. So from the level of ignorance here, we need more investment in the academia and the think tank sector. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Number seven is the deep state. The deep state is a, a terminology. It's a fact. It's not a fiction. Any state on earth, whether it's in the north, in Europe, America, or in the south, or in the east, or in the west, have a deep state. Deep state could be one of two. A good deep state, which you can stabilize the nation, the country, the state, the society, and so on. This is state through the state institution, which the, some of the public might not be able to understand or to find them, because they are not in the public sphere. And the bad deep state, which is for the criminals, whether they are drug dealers, so they are uh, prostitution, uh, everything, or thugs and ring leaders and all these sort of things. So the deep state is a part of the nature of any society, especially the bad one. Quite often I say, it's my own opinion, to be shared by others as well, that there is no state without a deep state. But if we have a strong civil society organized a sector, strong democratic democratic system, strong free country, it will shrink down the space of the deep state to the minimum. But none of these will be able to abolish the deep state. In some countries, the deep state, the bad deep state could be go from 2% to 50% or 60% of its power to control through the bad behavior the whole nation, and then others it could go back to 5 or 10% of its power. So there's no state without the deep state, either the bad one or the uh, one who support the country, the government, and others. Corrupt media. Why, especially in the Arab region, many, many, many TV stations, satellite, came out like a mushroom over the last 15, 20 years. You don't know where they come from? Who is the owner? They don't have any ethics. They don't have any media syndicate to vet on the quality of the program, the quality of the producers, the quality of the drama, the quality of the news, even the authenticity of the news, whether this news is a fiction or facts, is true or lie. No syndicates to vet against the characters of the talk show presenter who can be talking to themselves for hour, two hour, three hours and nobody can challenge them whether they throw lies or they create stories. The private media in there is one, one of the factors which actually affecting badly the flow of information to the public, mostly negative.
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Number nine is the corrupt business community. The business community which become like the prince of darkness, who only suck the blood of the victim, suck the blood of the nation, suck the blood of every citizen of the country because of their personal greed. Because there no one can monitor them and can stop them. And the worst scenario was that such corrupt business community were able to fund those groups, the thugs, to delay and stop and deviate the, uh, the process of development of the Arab Spring. It happens and everybody knows that from certain people who do not value the community, do not value the society, do not value the nation, do not value the country, the culture, the history, the value, and the faith of their own country. These are all here in turn. When you undermine the foreign powers, which you can control, direct, deviate, any uprise or spring or any change because of their own interest. Youth and people have to realize they are not living in their country alone. The country is interconnected to the globe and to different countries and some of those countries are very interested in their own country. That's why they will resist the change, because they get used to the status quo of such a country. When you bring a change, you find the resistance from such powers. This should be calculated as well. Eleven, number eleven is your, the importance of your country to certain power and the importance of your region to the globe. You cannot undermine this. How important and valuable is your country or how less important is your country and your region. Because this goes together, the foreign powers and the importance of your country, no matter how big is the country, how small, where is the region? This is this actually sometimes when you look at it, you have to realize, as I said before, that you are not living in your country alone because people are interested in the development, in investing their uh, money, in controlling your own country. Right? Coming back to the country to the state, traditional religious leaders, the state religious leaders, which became a part of the hurdles, obstacles, producing tailor-made fatwa against or with, and poisoning the atmosphere, no different to the corrupt media, no difference to the corrupt business community. Because a lot of the people who are ignorant, unemployed, and poor will trust such leaders. When they come on the, on the state television, or a private TV, or in a magazine, or a newspaper, or on a social media, they will trust them because of the negative level of ignorance and level of poverty and the dreams that they can bring them, which is false dreams. So they were a part of the problem. They should become a part of the solution. Number 13, I think, or 12, is the new preachers, what we call them uh, ad dua judud.
It's not a new phenomenon. This is more than 40 years ago started in the Middle East. When some youngsters used to read one or two books of hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu or tafsir, and they appoint themselves as imam or mufti or scholars. They are neither imam nor mufti nor scholar. Because they are confusing, they're adding to the confusion which is being created by the corrupt media and those traditional religious leaders. So mostly those, this group of call themselves dua, okay, confusing the youth and the ignorant and the poor and the unemployed. Many of them, many of them, some of them might be doing good things, but the majority are not. Some of them are dividing the community and confusing the youth. Number 14 or 15, the elite clubs. You know the elite? You know the superstar who become a reference on the television? Whom such, be supported by such business community, put in this media to talk about anything and everything. Because such an individual understand in politics, in uh, social problems, in economy, in agriculture, in art, in culture, in history, in music, everything. And they present him or her as the expert, as the reference point, while he is like an, an air balloon or a bubble does not have any substance, but because of such a media and such kind of businessmen, they will get these people to make them the stars of the community, the stars of the society, the stars of or the legend, better to call it the legend. They make them the legend, to be the legend, and they are not legend. Okay? Because they are controlled by the remote control of the media and the business, the corrupt business community. How many points now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Number 15 is the social media. It's a double-edged sword. If we use it properly, we'll be able to spread the good news the good behavior, the good moral value, the facts, not the fiction. We'll be able to educate and raise public awareness and solve problems. Okay? But if it's used by others who can spread lies, spread hatred, spread division, spread Bad examples, making those people to be the legend, this could be counterproductive. So social media also, our use of social media by the people who wanted to stop the change in the society, the change in the country, uh, made it difficult for the complete success of the Arab so when we look at these 15 points, there might be more points to be added. But in my own view, that the Arab Spring did not fail. Is not failing. Any process of change takes time. Any process of change and development meets a lot of obstacles help to delay it, and a lot of challenges to delay it. sometimes stop it but don't ever lose hope in making the change to help your 
all countries. And when we start, the 2017, we started fresh with a new vision, dream, being optimistic, to make more positive change in the society. If once I fail, that does not mean I am a failure. Because sometimes I fail to, to, to achieve at the first time, but I will try again and again and again and again till I succeed. If I don't succeed, I will show others how can they succeed. And the world of despair, loss of hope, should not be put on our table and our agenda in 2017, deleted from Oxford Dictionary, from the Arab Dictionary, from the Urdu Dictionary, from any dictionary, because you will be able to make the change, the positive change, to save your country, save your nation, and save humanity. So any society has a spring all the way not only for three months, and use the spring of the society to build the future of your country. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.